How in the world did we come to this? Well, welcome to St. John's Day in Porto, Portugal. It is what it is. So, are you ready for St. John's Day in Porto, Portugal, one of the country's most iconic festivities? Let's go! Let's go. In 1853, after one of the city's greatest floods, my third grandpa, Bernardino, left Porto for Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. At age 16, all by himself, never to come back here. I came here to celebrate his life, to have a good time in one of my ancestral cities. I wish he could see this place today. I decided to start the day at the city's most famous cafe, the Majestique, considered one of the world's 10 most beautiful cafes. I ordered one of the cafe's staple combinations. It's world-renowned French toast with a glass of Porto wine. And let me tell you, what a killer combination this is. All for the price of 11 euros or 12.3 US dollars. Cheers, guys. What a great start to a wonderful day. St. John's Day has been celebrated for over 700 years and it's part of the city's identity. It's amazing to see the streets crowded with people, private and public parties everywhere. But the barbecued sardines really caught my attention, for it was one of my dad's favorite things to eat when he was alive. It's easy to understand why though, it's basically everywhere here. Before Catholicism was mainstream, this date used to be a pagan festivity to commemorate the summer solstice, meaning the shortest night of the year. People waited all year round to worship the sun using the power of fire. Lighting fires or bonfires was a way to pay tribute to the sun god, guiding him through this very special night. At some point, the Roman Catholic Church embraced this festivity in honor of St. John, or São João in Portuguese. This is how it all started. Plastic hammers will be abundant everywhere, so don't forget to buy yours. Four words can describe what you'll see at the party these days. Bonfires, fireworks and quirky paraphernalia. Celebrating St. John's Day means being outside, so the streets become the official venue to this incredible party. You'll see many street fairs and street parties all over the city. A typical menu for these festivities will be barbecued sardines, different types of meat, roasted peppers, beer, shredded kale soup, and lots of Portuguese wine, so enjoy! The region of Beira by the river gets really crowded with people. You can people watch, go on a boat ride, eat, 
watch street artists perform and have lunch at one of the area's many restaurants. If you walk up the hill and get to São Domingo Square, you'll find many restaurants, hotels, cafes, art galleries and street artists. This place will be really crowded at night, you'll see it. Aside from the river, where the fireworks take place, a big chunk of the party happens at the beautiful Aliados Square, one of my favorite squares in all of Portugal. At Aliados, you find the statue of Peter IV of Portugal, also known in Brazil as Peter I. He was the guy who declared the independence of Brazil and then went back to Portugal to reclaim his throne from his own brother, who had married his daughter. What a story! He's one of the most iconic figures in both Brazilian and Portuguese history. Members of my family used to work for his father, King John VI, and moved to Brazil with the royal family in 1808, when Rio de Janeiro became the capital of the Portuguese Empire. Well, I love staying in this part of the city. Please check out my series of vlogs with reviews of four different hotels I've stayed here in Porto. Or four reviews are available here on Travelzilla. Link in description. I've stayed at the Pestana Brasileira Hotel and Historic Cafe. Well, I reviewed one of my favorite hotels in the city. Plus, it's stunning historic cafe. It's awesome, guys. I've also reviewed the apartments of the B.O. Sada Bandeira, which is a pretty awesome place to stay. And I've also reviewed the Spot Family Suites Hotel, which is really affordable and cool. This time around, I stayed at the Zero Box Lodge, one of the city's quirkiest hotels. you literally sleep in a giant box. And if you get too wasted at one of the hotel's main bars, you can spend the night there for free, but the room is located at the reception and it has glass walls so that everybody can watch you sleep. It's part of the deal, you guys. The hotel is very well decorated for St. John's Day. Now let me go back to my box, take a shower, change and get ready to show you St. John's party at night. Let's go! I'm about to record St. John's Day for you with the fireworks and everything. Have to get uh, to the lower part of the river. Bye, let's go! At night at Aliado Square, you can appreciate shows from a wide variety of artists. People will hammer your head till you drop. With plastic hammers, of course, big and small. There's nothing you can do about it, so relax and have fun. People light thousands of hot air balloons that dot the skies. It's so beautiful it's hard to forget. Let's go for a walk now.
do in here? Now I'm going down to the river. We need to go all the way down to the river to watch the incredible fireworks display. Let's go. Hey guys, it's too crowded here. It's really difficult to film, but hey, let's watch the show. Enjoy.
after at least 20 minutes of fireworks, I had to make my way back to Aliado Square, but after the fireworks, people are so excited that they hammer as many people as possible. They dance, sing in the streets, celebrate life. Enough said, let's go for a walk and see for yourself. Let's go. Here we are. This is how I got to this point. Let's keep on going. Let's see if the Portuguese really know how to throw a party, shall we? Hey guys, thank you so much for letting me share this incredible day with you, okay? This is a day I'll never forget. Don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment, share, and subscribe. See you in my next videos. Come to Porto. Bye-bye.